is Antonia Moser. I'm one of the registrars here. And uh, uh, my job is based here at the offsite storage facility. Uh, I work a lot on uh, managing the contents here. Um, I work on inventory projects. I work on shipping of collection objects between the museum and offsite storage. I work on outgoing loans. And uh, I also work with our um, conservators on sort of general risk management and emergency planning um, and a few other things like that. So these are some Dura prints, which I love. Uh, and again, these are some of the oldest, not in terms of the age of the object, but some of the first things that the museum collected. So this was um, acquired in 1896 or accessioned in 1896, I should say. Um, accession group three, this happens to be the 26th piece and it's this beautiful Dura print. That's uh, what, St. Jerome, I think. When an object has been acquired, uh, if it is to come here to offsite storage, uh, we, we generally only take objects here in the storage center that have been accessioned. Um, so that is to say, uh, as a registrar, we make a distinction between the terms acquire and accession. Um, acquire means we come into possession of the object. Accession is a more rigorous process where we um, consider the significance of the object, how relevant it is to the museum's mission. We consider its condition and what its future needs are going to be. Uh, and you know, only at that point do we say, okay, we're going to accession this object. We're gonna make it part of the permanent collection of the museum. Once an object is accessioned, it is assigned a unique number, the accession number. And um, ideally that number is actually uh, marked on the object itself. And there are various uh, sort of archival conservation worthy methods of marking objects with their numbers. Um, that object is tagged with that number. And that object is also uh, linked to all of its documentation and all of its cataloging by means of that unique number. So this is a piece that the museum acquired many years ago. It's one of the older ones. Uh, it's a, this beautiful little jade vase. Its accession number is 1898-6-1. So that means it was accessioned in 1898. It's the sixth accession of that year. And it's the first object within that gift or, or collection that was acquired. And even with all this space, we have such a big and varied collection um, that it, it can be a little bit difficult. So I do work with the collection managers on that part of the process. Um, we work together uh, to find a spot <laughs> um, where we can we, where we can keep the object, and it depends, of course, exactly where we place the object in storage. Depends, of course, on uh, the type of object that it is, how big it is, how small, um, what's its medium. Um, objects in our product design and decorative arts collection are, um, you know, stored on open shelves or in boxes. Textiles are pretty much always boxed. Uh, works on paper are, are always boxed or in flat files, again, depending on their size. There are a lot of considerations that go into uh, how we decide you know, where an object is going to have its home location. That's, that's sort of the term that we use um, for its storage spot. You have to like things. You have to like things. <laughs> you have to like objects, because um, you know, we're, we're here with them all day. Um, and uh, you have to sort of have a respect for the collection. And um, yeah, you have to have a certain sense of dedication. <laughs>